Hello, I'm Joe Keating. I'm the director of Applications Engineering with Infinite Power Solutions. Uh, we're a manufacturer of uh, thin film micro energy cells. These are solid state thin film rechargeable, uh, essentially batteries that are revolutionary new technology. They're very thin, they're very flexible. They're also very useful for applications such as self power or autonomously powered wireless sensor rooms. You might ask, what is that? Well, basically, whenever you have a uh, wireless technology or sensor, you have to have an energy supply for that. Traditionally, what people use are non-rechargeable sources, such as coin cells or double A's or similar types of devices. And those, those types of batteries have to be replaced. So if you have a wireless sensor out in the market, um, and you, or you have a wireless sensor out in your application, for instance, say a building where you're trying to track things like temperature, humidity, um, potentially uh, uh, occupancy in various rooms, you need to have some way to power those sensors. And generally what you find is people are going to use replaceable primary cells. The problem they're going to run into is if you have a lot of sensors like that in a building, you're going to have a lot of maintenance because you're going to have to routinely go around and replace those sensors. Well, this technology, because it is, first of all, very small, but it's also very rechargeable. What do I mean by that is that because of its solid state construction, it will outlast any other rechargeable device, including capacitors in many applications. They're very robust, but also very thin, so it also greatly reduces the volume of your application. For example, I can create a device uh, that has, has sensor electronics, battery management electronics on it, and is self-powered. All I have to do is plug in something like a piezoelectric device, or I can plug in a solar panel. Right? Any one of these things can be connected. Um, this is a wireless energy harvester here. If I plug that in, this will accept energy from a 900 megahertz broadcaster, which is actually located under this desk right now. Right now, it'll be charging a battery, and somebody will say, yeah, but there's no battery there. Well, in fact, there is. The battery, in this case, is embedded inside this printed circuit board. So what we've done here is we've created a solution that all I have to do is connect a wireless sensor node of some kind or another to it. Um, for example, I can connect a TI uh, RF2500 sensor to this, and then I'm able to sense temperature and voltage, and this solution will last basically forever. The reason being is because that battery in there has a lifetime of at least 15 years. So since it's charging from ambient energy that it's harvesting from the environment, I never have to maintain this. I never have to run any wires to it either. An example of a reference design that we've done around that is this device here. This is called our Eval EH02. And it has an occupancy sensor, it has a humidity sensor, it has a light sensor, and it has a temperature sensor, plus a voltage sensor. So all those sensors are embedded on this board. The average power usage on this board is down around 10 microwatts. And the reason is, is because it monitors how much energy we're getting from the solar panel, and then it dynamically adjusts the sample rate. So if you have a low light situation or a low energy situation, let's say you're using something other than a solar panel, like a thermoelectric energy harvester, which I can show you in a second. Any one of these sensors uh, or, or devices can be used to provide energy into this battery. Um, so we're charging the battery from that, but we're detecting how much charge energy we're putting into the battery. And if that slows down, in other words, we recognize that we're not getting as much power, we can reduce the sample rate. So then, we're no longer tied to uh, the uh, a, a fixed sample rate or to the fixed energy supply. So now we can put these energy uh, the, or these energy um, autonomous systems, meaning that you know these things are basically they're getting their own power. They're scavenging their own power from the environment. I can put these all over inside rooms and buildings. And now what does that get you? Well, first of all, it gets you a sensor that you don't have to maintain. And you might say, well, a wired sensor, you don't have to maintain a wired sensor. Well, the problem is, is what if you have to change the room configuration, or you have to add more sensors? Well, now you have to either move or add more wires, and that becomes very expensive, especially in existing infrastructure. So now you can take these and put them anywhere you want. So let's say you have a conference room that currently has a light switch and a thermostat in it. Well, that light switch and thermostat are all operated by people. So what happens is the people go in the conference room and they set the thermostat down as cold as it can go and turn the lights on and then they leave for the weekend. Well, now you're powering that conference room over the whole weekend. The addition of an occupancy sensor into that room 
And by the way, that's the typical configuration of every office in the United States right now because very few of them have occupancy sensors at this point. So I add this in place of my traditional light switch and connect it to a system that then feeds information back to the thermostat as well. So now I know if there's no one in the room, I can turn off the heating or the cooling. I can turn off the lights. Well, now I can cut down your energy usage by as much as, as 90% because very often rooms aren't used very much when people leave the light and the heat on anyway. That saves the building owner quite a bit of money. And it also provides you with a solution that you don't have to maintain. So you can locate this anywhere in your conference room. So that's an example of a reference design based around a technology that will last a very long period of time because if you use a traditional battery in this situation, what's going to happen is, is that traditional battery is going to wear out and every few years you're going to have to send people through to change all of those batteries. So the combination of a solar panel and an MEC will be less expensive after that first battery change because typically it costs somewhere around $20 to $30 to change a battery because you have to pay people to go do it. So that's a very good reason right there. And that's only in an office. If you're in an industrial situation, for instance, like uh, a refinery, right, it can cost as much as $10,000 to change a battery because you have to shut the refinery down while you send somebody in to go change that battery for safety reasons. So having something that lives on it or gets its own energy, a system that scavenges its own energy and has an energy storage device that will last the lifetime of the application, prevents you from having to pay those kinds of maintenance fees. The other thing that this system does is, is that with the light sensor on it, it's detecting how much light it's getting, so it knows how much energy it's using. So in a very high light situation, I can get samples as frequently as once every 10 seconds. In a very low light situation, I can cut it down to say once every 10 minutes or once an hour. So I never run out of energy and the device never stops working. Albeit it may operate a little bit more slowly, but you're still getting information and you're still controlling what's going on in the room.